Hey guys, it's Chris Monk at Highline Guitars and you're watching episode 74 from the Luthiers Workbench. What I want to talk about today is the techniques and the process that I use for gluing a fretboard to a finished guitar neck. And, but before I can jump into the actual uh, process of applying the glue and clamping everything together, I wanted to explain how I arrive at the point where I'm ready to bring those two pieces together. My philosophy is really simple. I don't like to waste wood, time, money, and I don't like to do things over again. And for that reason, uh, I have uh, a pretty simple approach where I try to make each part of the guitar, the fretboard, the neck, and the body, all separately. And I make them all the way to the point where all I need to do is the last little bit of finish sanding before I start to bring all those parts together. And the reason for that is at any point in the fabrication process, you can run into some problems. Um, sometimes you make mistakes, other times the wood reveals flaws that you may not have known were there. And when that happens, you have a piece of wood that is no longer of use. And if you glue your fretboard, a fretboard blank, to a neck blank and then start to carve and shape and sand everything, if you run into a problem, you've lost both pieces of wood since they're glued together. So what I do is I make the fretboard all the way from a blank to um, a finished piece. I'll, I'll carve the radius, cut the slots, drill and fill the marker dots, and then cut the profile shape. Then separately I'll make the neck and I'll carve the contour, cut the headstock shape, drill the, the tuner holes. At that point, I'll install the truss rod and then I'll glue the two together. That way, if I accidentally cut a fret slot crooked or maybe discovered a knot or a, uh, a crack in the, the neck, I haven't lost the entire neck. It's just that one part. So, um, now, uh, with that in mind, I will jump in to show you uh, how I bring these two pieces together, how I glue them up and then clamp them. There are a couple of things that you need to do before you actually glue the fretboard to the neck. The first is you gotta make sure that those two surfaces that are gonna be mated together are plain and sanded absolutely flat. Then you install the truss rod and then cover the truss rod slot with a strip of masking tape to keep the glue from getting into the slot. Next, I apply the wood glue and I'm using tight bond. There are several different kinds of tight bonds available. It doesn't really matter which one you use. They all uh, will glue the wood sufficiently. Then I spread the glue into a thin film using a plastic card. I get these in the mail all the time and I just save them uh, for this uh, specific purpose. But what you want to do is you want to have a th a thin film of that yellow glue spread over the surface of the wood where it's going to be uh, glued to the fretboard. And you don't want it too thin, but then again, you don't want it too thick. Uh, ultimately, what you're looking to do is when you clamp the fretboard down, you're going to want to get just a little bit of squeeze out all the way around. You don't want glue running down the sides of the neck. If, you, if that happens, you used way too much glue. Now once I have that glue spread evenly across the surface, I can go ahead and remove the masking tape. Wood glue is slippery stuff, so to keep the fretboard from sliding around when I clamp it, I'll take a small pinch of table salt and sprinkle it into the glue in several places along the length of the neck. As I clamp the fretboard, uh, those grains of salt will act like cleats and keep the two pieces of wood from sliding against one another. It won't take a lot of salt to do this, so you don't want to pile it up. Just sprinkle it in a few spots like you see here. Now I'm ready to position the fretboard on the neck. First I'll set it into place and then I'll just use some light uh, squeeze clamps to hold it while I get ready to clamp it down more firmly using ratchet clamps and C-clamps. 
Now you've got about 10 minutes of working time with uh, type on wood glue, so you don't really have to rush it, but you want to make sure you have all your clamps ready to go. Before you install the big clamps, you want to make sure that the back of the neck is adequately supported. If it isn't, the neck wood could crack. Now you're probably wondering, how much clamping pressure do you really need to use and how long do you need to leave the clamps in place? Well, actually, you don't need that much clamping pressure and you don't need to leave them in place as long as you might think. I see guys all the time just cranking down their clamps when gluing two pieces of wood together. And the problem with that is, is if you clamp it with too much pressure, you're gonna squeeze out the majority of the glue in the joint, thus starving that area of the glue necessary to get a good bond. Also, when you uh, clamp it, it only takes about 30 minutes to an hour before the glue is fully set up. And for an area the size of a fretboard, you really don't need to go longer than that. I know some people like to leave their clamps on overnight, but after that hour is, has passed, the clamps really aren't doing that much. Now, as you tighten the clamps, you're gonna notice uh, glue is gonna squeeze out along that seam where the fretboard meets the neck. And that should happen uh, fairly consistently along its length on both sides. When that does happen, there's a temptation that a lot of uh, so-called woodworkers, uh, amateur woodworkers will use to remove that squeeze out. And what they'll do is they'll grab a damp rag and they'll wipe that squeeze out and wipe it off while it's still wet. But the problem is when you do that, what you're actually doing is you're spreading a thin film of glue along that surface of the wood and the moisture in the rag that you're using will dilute it and cause it to soak into the wood. And that can cause problems with whatever finish you're going to apply, whether it's true oil or an oil varnish or lacquer. It prevents it from adhering properly to those areas of the wood. And you can really see it in um, a splotchy looking finish. So the best way to deal with squeeze out is as you tighten the clamps and you see it starting to form, leave it alone. Don't bother it. It's just sitting on the surface. It's not soaking into the wood. The only way wood glue can soak into the wood is when it's under clamping pressure. And since that squeeze out is no longer under pressure, it's just sitting on the top surface of the wood and it's not contaminating those surrounding fibers. So after you've removed the clamps when the glue is dried, you can take care of that squeeze out by simply grabbing a sharp chisel and then just slice that, uh, squeeze out right off the surface of the wood. It's real simple. And you can do that um, with any part of the guitar that you're gluing together. Like if you're gluing a body blank together, or if you're gluing the top down, let the squeeze out be. And then just go back later on and slice it off once it's dry and your finish will look a lot better. So that's how I glue a fretboard onto a neck. And at this point, all I need to do is some finish sanding, and then I will apply my own custom made varnish mix. And then once that's dry, I can install the frets and this neck will be ready to install in the body that it's gonna go into. So uh, until next time, have a great weekend and we'll see you in episode 75.